Good morning, saints. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, congregation. Good morning to you out there in social media land as well. I am Curtis Alexander, the senior pastor and founder of the City of Refuge Church Incorporated here in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. We bless God. We thank God for you watching this morning. We thank God for you listening and participating in our ministry this morning. We thank God for you. We praise God. We worship God here at the City of Refuge Church. We just want to come on both come on before uh briefly this morning and talk about what, what are you God for? What are you believing God for? Philippians chapter 4 verses four through seven. We're going to read that this morning and talk about it, about what are you believing God for is the title of the message the Lord has for you this morning on March 20th, 2022. So without further ado, let's, let's, let us pray. Father God of heaven, we come boldly before your throne of grace, thanking you, worshiping you, honoring you, and praising you for the things you have done and the things you are going to do in our lives. Father God, we just thank you, we honor you, we praise you. Sit with us now and become our holy guest as this time does become divine. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone can say amen and amen. We're getting started a little bit early this morning, saints, but but but, but I'm going to get to the, to the word this morning because I, I believe that it's going to bless you, as it always should. But the, Let's read Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I would say, Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. You see, the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer, in supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm. May the Lord give us teachable minds and understanding heart as this time does become divine. You can be seated if you are in-house in the presence of the Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Saints, we exist to do things that can't be done without God's special and supernatural grace. You see, saints, we don't exist to preach, but to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. So that people are supernaturally awakened from unbelief and changed beyond what any human could cause. See, we don't exist to teach Sunday school or but to teach in the power of the Holy Spirit so that children and young people and adults are supernaturally converted and built up in faith and love beyond what anyone could cause. You see, saints, we don't exist to sing, but to sing in the power of the Holy Spirit because the affections of our hearts are supernaturally illumined and, 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 and the glory of Christ is seen and savored beyond what any human or any music could cause. Mm -hmm. We don't exist to do evangelism and missions, but to do evangelism and missions in the power of the Holy Spirit so that hard and unbelieving hearts would be supernaturally changed into soft, believing hearts. And the list could go on and on, saints. <laughs> do you see this? Are, are we in agreement on this the City of Refuge Church. We See, we're not a club. We're not a covenant band of saved sinners who have been supernaturally converted from belief, unbelief to belief in Jesus as our God and our Savior and our treasure. We are a people in whom the spirit of the living Christ merciful dwells. Yeah, what do you believe in God for, saints? Romans chapter 8, verse 9 says, anyone who does not, who does not have the spirit of Christ... This is the Bible. This is the word of God. It says this. Anyone, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. 
Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. That's not me. That's the word of God. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Can you say amen, son? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, therefore, everything we aim to accomplish as a church is impossible without God's special supernatural action. You see, saints, God has promised to do for us things we, can, we cannot do ourselves when we pray, that is. When we get on our faces before him and confess our sins and, and give thanks for his grace and lift up the cup of salvation and plead for him to fill it with supernatural blessings for the needs in our lives and families and church and business and city and nation and the world. Ah, oh, saints, what are you believing God for? It is not... It is not breathtaking to hear Jesus say, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Matthew 7, 7. Isn't it breathtaking to hear his brother James say, you do not have because you do not ask? <laughs> or to put it positively, if you, have, if you had asked, God would have, ex God would have acted to meet your need. This is astonishing. God acts in response to your prayer. The all-knowing, the all-foreseeing, and all-planning, and all-governing God will, wills for your, for your Christ-exalting prayers to be the occasion of his actions. You see, saints, prayer week makes, makes a statement that, that we exist to do things that we cannot do without the special supernatural grace of God. Because God planned and promised that he would do these things in answers to prayer. Praise, prayer. It, it goes hand in hand. So when we plan to pray in a concerted way, we are saying the special supernatural action of God is essential in the life of this church and the life of our mission. Think about this, saints, in relation to our mission as a church. We exist to spread a passion for the su supremacy of God in all things, for the joy of all peoples through Jesus Christ. That's why we exist. If that's why we exist, then, why, then our success in this is utterly dependent on the special Supernatural work of God. Nobody has a passion for God's supremacy in all things for Christ's sake without a supernatural conversion. You have to understand, saints, try and see what you can do to make a person with no spiritual interest have a joyful, Christ-exalting passion for God's supremacy in all things. Saints, only God, the author and finisher of our faith, can do this. That is why we pray without ceasing. We talked about that in previous weeks. We got we got to pray. We got to pray in every pray without ceasing. God will complete His saving purposes by prayer, saints. We need we we say it Sunday after I say it Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. We can never stop praying. We always need to be in a constant mindset of prayer. I have a friend, she, you know, she prayed about, she prayed about everything. Praying on what kind of car to get, praying on where to move, praying about, she has a constant relationship in prayer with God. God does not intend to co complete his saving purposes in, in the world without prayer. He will complete these purposes. That is crystal clear in the Bible, and he would do it by prayer. That is also crystal clear. You see, listen to Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored 
as happened among you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. In other words, saints, the word of God came to you and by God's sovereign grace you heard it for what it really is, the word of God, and you believed and you forsook your idols and you are eagerly waiting for the coming of Jesus to deliver you from the wrath to come. And you are living lives of love. You see, saints, we, 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 we always got to stay in prayer. That's what happens when the word of God speeds ahead and, and is honored. And Paul says, pray that it may happen. Why would he say that, saints? Because, because the advance of God's saving power in the world happens in response to prayer. God will see to it that there are praying churches because he means to get the job done. If prayer is a means to an absolute certain end, then God will see to it. We got to continue to pray. We are a praying church. We should be a praying nation. We should be in praying states. If prayer is a means to an absolute certain end, then God will see to it with absolute certainty that the means that means come to pass. He will see to it that there are praying churches that would that the word might speed on and be honored. See, says we got to be a praying nation instead of what we are. It's amazing we find ourselves as a nation doing other things that is not godly and we're recognized for things that we do as a nation that's ungodly. We need to be a praying nation. We don't need to never cease the prayer. What do you believe in God for? It's my desire and my prayer is that we would be one of them. That we would not be passed over and left with our fatal human successes. Saints. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, by prayer and supplication. See, so he says, if there were time, I, I would love to do an extended exposition of Philippians 4, 6, and 7. But I simply want to read it and make a brief comment and then stand on it and Trust the Lord to apply it to your life. As I unfold the vision that I have for the City of Refuge Church as a praying church. So let's read it. Let's talk about it. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, saints. With, there's that Thanksgiving word. Okay. Okay. Let your request, plural, requests, be made known to God. That's verse 6. See, don't be anxious about anything. See, 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 let's read verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, not some, not a few, not several, but all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, saints, the, the effect of faithful prayer here is, is stated first negatively, then positively. Mm. It says negatively, don't be anxious about anything. Positively, the peace of God, which, which surpasses all, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul promises that a life of faithful Christ-dependent, Christ-exalting prayer will be a life protected from anxiety and its many sinful fruits by God's peace. You see, saints, we, we can never stop praying. See, if you want victory over worry and you want to have, and you want to have the, <coughs> the steady enjoyment of God's peace, then here is Paul's prescription. 
Watch this. And everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Don't miss the words in everything. In everything. Let your request be made known to God. Pray about everything. Pray about everything. That might sound kind of crazy thing to do because we're not used to doing that particular thing about prayer. But just pray about everything. Stay in the mindset of prayer all, all day. Don't just pray in a crisis. <laughs> pray about everything, saints. That whether you eat or, or drink or whatever you do would glorify God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 The most crucial prayer for every situation and action is, Hallowed be thy name, Matthew 6, nine. Tells you how to pray. How should we do this? Paul uses three words in, in everything. By prayer. That's, that's the broad word of spiritual devotion, including different kinds of prayer. And supplication. That's the narrow word that focuses on the kind of prayer, namely asking for help. Supplication. With thanksgiving, that's the humble, non-demanding mindset that flavors all of play, all of prayer. Making requests thankfully means that, that we would be uh, content and thankful with whatever God wisely and lovingly gives us. You see, saints, and, and we know that we that he will hear our prayer and wisely and lovingly give us what's best for us. You understand? See, when we let our requests be made known to God like this in the devotion of prayer and many specific requests for help with a heart that is thankful for everything God designs for us to have. The pleasures and the pain, then his peace will guard our minds and free us from anxiety in a way that defies mere rational explanation. It surpasses all understanding. See, saints, what do you believe in God for? Oh, that the Lord might make you feel the joy and the, and the wonder and the power and privilege and the peace of a life of prayer. See, we got to have a life of prayer. My dream for the prayer of this life, for the prayer life of the City of Refuge Church I close with a sketch of a dream or a vision of what prayer might look like at the City of Refuge Church if we were increasingly gripped by this great privilege. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, when you pray, when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. That's what we get the prayer room for, the prayer closet. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So I dream of the City of Refuge Church daily finding a scheduled place and time for a personal communication or communion with God, confessing, confessing sins and thanking God for blessing and praising him for his perfections. Asking for help in your life and interceding earnestly for others. You see saints every day in your Solitary place and time, you should be praying. The Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. So I see the City of Refuge Church with married couples on their knees and faces together, not with their children at meals or, or, or for family devotions, but just the two of you praying out loud together for each other's holiness and for your marriage and for your children and your church and your neighbors and your missionaries and the advance of God's saving power in the world. And since the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, Fathers, bring up your children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I dream of, a, of the city of Refuge Church with families where every day not just 
at mealtime, but in the morning or in the evening or both, the children are gathered and the word of the, of, of, of the Lord is read and everyone prays so that the smallest children learn from the earliest times. Prayer is an essential part of parents' lives and our lives as a family. We exist to do things that can't be done without God's special supernatural grace. Saints, and all the while they are learning how to pray. See, just kids. If you bring them up in the discipline and instruction of God, as James instructed, I'm sorry, as Paul instructed in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 4. Now we're going to talk about James. Since James, the brother of Jesus, said in James, chapter 5, verse 16, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. I dream of a of the city of refuge with small groups and hundreds of deep friendships and where people are praying for each other, hands on prayer for healing, for reconciliation, for the loss of loved ones, for uh, seemingly intractable sin and for endurance and faith and where groups and friends are uniting to pray for a cause together and where the mission of the church is carried in prayer. You see, saints, since the 12 apostles said in Acts chapter 6, six verse 4, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Of, of the word. <clears throat> you see, saints, I, I dream of the city of refuge where all staff meetings and elder council meetings and, and all committee meetings and task force meetings and planning meetings do not just hurry into human discussion with an opening prayer, but linger with the Lord in a season of of prayer and soak the meeting in prayer and then return to prayer during the, the meeting so that the that the way the, the work of the meeting is done is by prayer. See, this is all about prayer and supplication. Giving thanks. And it is clear that the Bible expects us to pray out loud together as a church, not just in solitude. For example, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 16. If you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know that you are saying, what you are saying? Verse 17 says, for, for you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. In other words, God means for us to pray sometimes so that others can hear us and say amen to our prayers and can be built up in faith by hearing what we pray, saints. <clears throat> Therefore, I dream of the City of Refuge Church with prayer meetings each morning of the week and Wednesday nights that many more people attend so that they can, we can build up each other and up in prayer and speak to God together and not just in isolation. The dream of special nights of prayer, mornings of prayer, are not with dozens, but hundreds praying. See, we have got to get to that place, saints, where we continue to pray. And finally, since the essence of worship is vertical communication with God, Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 through 9, I dream of worship services in which everyone is radically, deeply, joyfully, authentically engage with God in prayer all through the entire service, praying as you come, praying as you sing, praying as you listen, praying as you go. Worship is nothing if it is not, in, not the engagement of the heart and mind in prayer to God. Confessing, thanking, praising, pleading, or that, that, that thousands of people in corporate worship would not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, saints, let your request, your request, what do you believe in God for? What, let your request be made known to God. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, saints, guard your hearts, guard your hearts, guard your minds in Christ Jesus, and set you free to seek the kingdom of God first. Father God of heaven, we thank you for this time we've gathered and assembled here this morning. Father God, we're going to continue to pray, continue to seek thy face, and continue to worship, but 
Father God, we just want to say thank you for this message this morning. And that we need to make our requests known to you. And we'll, do, we'll be doing that, Father God, in the days, weeks, months to come. <clears throat> and we won't be anxious about anything, but we're going to pray and have supplication, and supplication with thanksgiving, so that the peace of God got our hearts and our minds. So we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify you. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Every heart can say amen, and amen, and amen. <clears throat> Saints, we are at the time of service where we have three pleas. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're not saved. You have to be saved to make it in to the kingdom of God. And to have that personal relationship with him. So confess. Jesus. As your personal Lord and Savior. That's number one. If you're not saved. We need to, you to get saved. My first plea. Second plea. If you're looking for a church. And you don't have one. There is no perfect church. We are all spirits but live in a body and possess a soul so we are imperfect people there is no perfect church saints we all make mistakes we all fall short of God's glory but we, we are striving for perfection amen so if you're looking for a church home we're here every Sunday we're going to be starting up our virtual Sunday school class so if you want to attend we're here virtually, we're here physically, in person. Um, <clears throat> go to our website, tcorc-tn.wixsite.com forward slash website. Fill out our new members form that's on our website. You can email us, you can contact us, you can say, I want to join the City of Refuge Church. You know, the City of Refuge Church is not for everybody. Amen. Every church is not for everybody. But we thank God if the Lord lays it upon your heart to join, become a member of this church, then we would gladly, we want you to do that, gladly wanting to be your church family. And if you need, <clears throat> and if you need prayer for any situation, circumstance, We'll be here to pray with you. We have a great men and women of God who love the Lord, who will pray with you, who will believe with you if you're needing that. Remember, don't be anxious. But we read it, talked about it this morning in the sermon, Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord. All right, saints, so salvation, church membership, if you want to join the body of Christ and be a great and awesome member at the City of Refuge Church, that's, prayer, that's plea number two. Number three is if you need prayer, we have men and women of God who will pray with you, believe with you, and who can get a prayer through. If you want to give an offering, if the Lord lays it upon your heart, we are not a church that begs and pleads and all that and pulls on your ear, or pulls on you to give. I can pull on my ear and hoop and collar. But that's not what the Lord has taught me to do. We have several, several, several ways to do that. We have the text to give. You text the number 73256. 73256. Text TCORC in that 73256 number. And then you can follow the prompts if you want to give online. That's our text to give. You can also go to our website. TCORC-TN.Wixsite.com forward slash website and give that way. If you're here in the congregation and you can drop it off in the bucket uh, on your way out, or if you want to mail in your check or money order or what have you, our uh, P. 
P.O. Box is 2054 Nashville, Tennessee, 37011. All right, Saints, so we have the text to give, the seven, which is 73256, text TCORC, and then you follow the prompts once you do that. That is the easiest way to do it, and then that way you have control over uh, how much, whenever you want to do that as well. So that's the easiest and most common way people do give at the City of Refuge Church. Uh, we also have PayPal. We also have T, uh, the Cash App. You can go to our website and find those um, <clears throat> links to those different uh, aspects of giving. Uh, again, our website is tcorc site w i x s i t e forward dot com forward slash website, and you can uh, go to our menu page, uh, home page, and then click on the right menu bar, and it should come up as give, and you can give uh, however the Lord lays it upon your heart, any way, in any one of those ways, and uh, we'll be so. Gracious, Amen. The money does not come to my pocket. It goes for the building of the kingdom of God so we can continue to be a blessing to the people, men and women of God, and to the people of God. Amen. So we can come on live every Sunday and uh, be um, coming on every Wednesday or Saturday or Monday whenever our um, associate pastors do their virtual Sunday school or in class, enrichment classes. We're actually starting a virtual enrichment class um, that's going to be on our website this hopefully this afternoon where we can get you linked um, and signed up for the different classes we're going to be offering. So be looking for over our website. Make sure you share this message. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your coworkers, your loved ones, your enemies, your neighbors, anyone you come in contact with. Share the message, share the message, share the message. It can be placed on your Facebook, it can be placed on your YouTube, your Instagram, your Twitter, every kind of social media aspect that you want it to, it can be shared. So please do share the message. Amen. So we thank God for you watching. We thank God for you being here at the City of Refuge Church. For those that are in the conversation this morning, God bless you. We love you. God loves you more. Hug on somebody, fist bump somebody, let them know that you love them but let them know that God loves them more. There's nothing that you can do that will separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Have an awesome week until that time when we uh, come together again. Be blessed. God loves you. We, I, I can't say anything else about that. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. You're an awesome soul. God bless you. God keep you. So, Father God, take us out and, and bring us back together again safely without harm hurt or danger, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We praise you, we honor you, we glorify you. It is in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Every heart can say amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Have an awesome week. Be blessed.